Coming up, we take a look at the role of the modern church in Canada today and learn about an animation studio that is opening the Bible to millions in a new and fresh way. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada, and I'm with Stephen again. We're so glad to have you. It's been amazing so far. And today we're talking about the church in Canada. Yes, so we are. I'm curious, what do you see when you see the church in Canada? I, I mean, to me, it's, it's Matthew 9. I, I guess I'm an evangelist by heart, but I see, you know, just this tremendous opportunity uh, for the church to be partnering with God and, and winning souls. And, um, you know, like there's tons of things going on around the world. Lots of people are asking, like, where's hope? Where, where's my stability? Where's my peace? And the church has the answers for these. I, I agree with you. I think the time is now for the church. And so, yeah, talking about the church in Canada today, it's a really important question to ask, what is its role? And so our next guest may have some insight into this. So please welcome Reverend Ken Russell. Hi, Ken. Thank you so much for being with us here today. Hi, Bill. So nice to see you on screen. Great to be with you. You know, you work actively uh, hands-on with the church, in particular in BC and the Yukon area. And so what are you seeing and what are you noticing about the church in Canada right now? Yeah, I think uh, the greatest uh, change, the shift in the church in Canada has been globalization. Right. We've been impacted by immigration and newcomers to Canada. Congregations are rapidly growing and becoming more and more international. In Canada, 24%, one out of every four people of our population is foreign born. And I'm an example of that. I was born in Karachi, Pakistan, came here in 1970 and integrated as a Canadian. I'm a Canadian citizen now, but uh, I'm among, you know, 1.3 million new immigrants that came between 2016 and 2021. So I think that's probably the biggest shift we've seen impacting the church in Canada. Yeah, I, I agree with you. In the 22 years that I've been here, I've seen a dramatic shift. And now most of our uh, new families are coming from other parts of the world. And so this is becoming a, a pressing need, not only for the church, but also for our culture and society. And so how have you seen the church practically meeting the needs of this new demographic, these new Canadians? Well, that's a great, it's a great question. The immigrants that are coming are highly educated Yes. trained, you know, they're coming from areas like China, India, Latin America, Southeast Asia, highly skilled, but they're finding our systems <clears throat> difficult, transportation systems, educational systems, banking systems. And so churches that really reach into this community are ones that have um, really developed a good outreach strategy to help people become more Canadian in their lifestyle. Yeah, I agree with you. In our context, we're recognizing that they want to become a part of a Canadian church. They don't want a, a church that's only their ethnicity or language because they want to become more Canadian. And we have a great opportunity to serve this need. We've also been learning, though you have to also give them a voice and a platform. Um, again, you, you celebrate by, by what you see. And so we're, we're, just, we're just growing and exploding in this area as a result of that. And I can imagine you're hearing some great stories about what some churches are actually doing. So can you give us a couple of examples of what churches are doing in your area? Yeah, the, the greatest example that comes to mind is our Arabic church. It was newly planted uh, about four or five years ago. And uh, the pastor there is just amazing in reaching into these uh, communities of faith and and into the non-churched areas as well. So, so Bill, some of these people who are coming are Christians already right. and others aren't. And so he has started uh, a ministry for orientation, uh, medical systems, transport, the internet technology that we have here in Canada, banking, even things like fraud protection. Many of these people who are coming to Canada are vulnerable because um, fraud is uh, prevalent here in Canada and, and they can be taken easily. So uh, they've, they've set up some educational options for them and language and employment options. The other thing is <clears throat> loneliness. There's social isolation within these communities. And so meaningful community drop-in centers, um, places where mental health needs can be addressed, depression, anxiety, separation, anxiety from their home country. Uh, and further, they've developed things like addiction uh, recovery as well, because some of the, the um, uh, folks that have come as newcomers 
they they have uh, addictions and other things that need to be broken. So those have been the most significant stories. Um, food banks have been open for those that are less privileged than others. Uh, and so those churches that have done this best are in the Latino, Punjabi, Kerala, Filipino community, and certainly this Arabic church that is is worked. Yeah, for us, uh, we just found that putting them in key leadership positions was critical because, again, you you hear and they hear and see things and give input to things that we maybe wouldn't have thought of. And we also recently have been engaging new Canadians who are trapped in hotels, uh, ways to come and hang out with their families and have, uh, you know, food and fun and just really practical ways that you can make a difference. And so just really quickly, um, you know, maybe our viewers are watching and they're part of a church. What are just a couple of really practical, proactive ways that they could make a difference in the lives that God is bringing to our great country? Yeah, well, one of the, the highest needs, I think, is ESL programs. Uh, English as a second language is, is taught, and if it's offered free through a church community or uh, a home setting where families are helped to, to improve their English skills, that's a, a really good uh, way into into the newcomers' lives. Uh, the other part is what you you mentioned. A lot of them are coming, fleeing from very terrible situations. Uh, so refugee sponsorship programs are important as well, and and our network has worked in this area very successfully. But if you want to do something fun to reach into these uh, communities, and the specific one that I was addressing earlier, the Arabic community uh, filled with Muslims, they love to eat, they yes. love to have a barbecue, they love to have sporting events. Uh, you know, we've done some of those things uh, through this church and other churches in our in our area very successfully. So they feel that they're not being um, indoctrinated; they're just being befriended. And yeah. that's that's very important. Love wins. It just does. Well, that's awesome. I, I'm looking forward to our conversation. And we are going to be right back to continue this conversation on the state of the church in Canada with Ken Russell. In whatever circumstance you face, God wants you to have victory. It's not too late. Believe that God wants to do a miracle in your life. And if you need to talk with someone who understands, all you have to do is call us at 1-855-759-0700. A prayer partner is waiting to listen and pray with you today. I'm back with my good friend, Ken Russell, and we talked about the opportunities that we as the church have right now with new Canadians, but I wanna talk about some of the challenges as well. So Ken, you, you're a leader of leaders. Uh, you oversee a lot of churches in, in your area. What do you think personally is the biggest challenge facing the church in our culture today? Well, I, uh, I think there's actually three that I can, I can label, so I'll be quick. <laughs> But you know, living in a post-pandemic reality, our churches have have shifted. Uh, there's a social cultural shift that's gone on, and, and we, by and large, we were caught unaware. Uh, the first one is uh, a real shift to individualism and isolation. People are disconnecting from time-consuming, messy, anxiety-provoking uh, interpersonal relationships. Uh, they're going online. And they're placing more emphasis on self rather than others. We're in a high-tech, low-touch world. Right. And so this has created a challenge for the church. Church has become an option uh, to gather and worship together rather than an, a necessity for spiritual growth in life. So that's the first one. The second one is intensified emotions. People are making life-changing decisions on how they feel. Uh, and their their identity is tied up in their feelings rather than in the truth of God's word. And so this is a challenge facing the church. We need to address people's purpose, their identity, and their destiny. And the third one is we live in an information overloaded world. Uh, Google can tell you things that the average person didn't know many, many years ago. But the problem with that is information without discernment it leads to confusion. And so these are three things I've identified as the greatest challenges for the church. Oh, that is so good. And it was even alliteration. I love it. Isolation, identity, and information overload. Really true. And how do you think we got here? Like what, what has happened to us? And maybe even in the church, how have we kind of maybe let this creep in even into our church culture? Well, I think we've had a love affair with technology for a very long time. 
and uh, people's trust levels uh, with what they're hearing and seeing online, TikTok videos and other social uh, media programs have really influenced them, coupled with the fact that big tech companies have used algorithms for a long time to shape uh, consumer behavior and our understanding. And so our dependency on technology has shifted the church. So this is how we've gotten here. Uh, you know, we have uh, an apologetic complacency among believers to actually speak the truth, to proclaim the truth, to live the truth in uh, in their lives. And so I think that's how we got here. Technology, and I'm not blaming technology, but I think that's how we got there. No, I, I, I agree with you 100%. One of the things we're learning in our context is people actually just want the truth again. They're tired of, uh, you know, truth being spun or angled or manipulated. Don't don't try to convince me. Just tell me the truth and let me make a decision. I'm, I'm finding that in our context. But for you, um, as you think about this and the challenges we're facing, what do you think can be done about it? Well, the, I, I think we need to emulate Christ. Mm -hmm. So Christ was not above culture. He wasn't below culture. He was embedded in culture. And so if we embrace the mission of Christ to transform culture, we cannot approach it combatively. We have to approach it redemptively, just like Jesus did. So as followers of Christ, we should use technology and social media to redeem what's broken in our culture. Yeah. So people's identity is based on sexuality today, rather than on who they were designed to be by their creator, their purpose. Uh, if we can proclaim that, that true purpose of why God created human beings and their destiny, I think we can embrace technology rather than run from it or fear it and use social media to proclaim truth in these three, idea in these three areas of identity, purpose, and destiny. That is so good. I really hope that there are pastors or key leaders in our churches and those who attend church that are listening to this. Um, but do you have just one, we have just a short time left. Do you have a, maybe a story, uh, an example of where this is happening? Yeah, I, I think the best example uh, that I've seen how, you know, take place in our church is one of our churches in downtown Vancouver, uh, Broadway Church. They use um, social media really well and they have run a course called Skeptics. So it's based on an interactive uh, meal where uh, people who have questions about faith or they're even a bit skeptical about Christianity or religion in general can come in a non-threatening atmosphere and have their questions answered with truth. Uh, so those are that's about the best example I've seen. There's other programs like Celebrate Recovery, Divorce Care, Financial Planning, The Truth Project Alpha. There's lots of programs that we run, but it really is, it comes down to the relational level. It really does. Well, thank you so much for being with us here today. You've helped so much and keep up the great work. We need you. We need great leaders like you who are cheering on our pastors in the local church to be innovative and reach into culture in order to see lives transformed by the power of Jesus. Thanks, Ken. It's always great to talk to you. My pleasure, Bill. <laughs> well, now here's a look at one organization's creative way of connecting culture to the Bible message. Tucked away in a quiet Portland neighborhood is an animation studio that is opening the Bible to millions in a new and fresh way. Some amazing things are happening behind that door. An idea of some college buddies has become one of the most successful ways to help people understand the Bible. During their college days, longtime friends Tim Mackey and John Collins would kick around ideas on how to get more people reading the Bible and understanding it better. The result was an animation experiment called Bible Project that at first only included two videos posted online for their friends. Less than 10 years later, Bible Project has more than 140 employees. Creating more than 180 videos and 350 podcast episodes over the internet. With over 620 million views in over 200 countries and over 5 million subscribers worldwide. Michael McDonald is the Chief Global Focus and Strategic Relationships Officer. None of us uh, were, were smart enough to think about, like, would we create this big nonprofit out of this? This really was a passion project of two friends going, I think this would be helpful to not only just us, but, but some of our friends. And the crowd just caught up so fast in 
uh, not only watching them, but wanting more of them. And they started helping fund them just with, you know, five bucks here, 10 bucks there, and until we had enough funds to make another video, and away we went. After college, John served as a pastor before beginning a career making explainer videos for large companies. After Tim got his PhD in Hebrew Bible and Jewish studies, he became a pastor and seminary professor. Then they decided to join forces, combining Tim's Bible knowledge and John's creative abilities. And Bible Project was born. This is just basically our workflow for a, for a one of our fully animated videos. So some projects are in illustration, some are in animation, some are writing, some are storyboarding. Then I meet with the artist and then we go through all this in detail. And then uh, the artist goes and draws the beautiful version. Um, then, yeah, so by the time I sit down to record, I've got this in my head. The first, dis the first dispute, that's hard to say quickly. That is hard. The first dispute, the first dispute. The first dispute starts when God says that he still loves his covenant people, Israel, despite their failures. Bible Project is trying to help those who only see the Bible as a collection of inspirational quotes. It takes on those difficult passages in the Bible that many Christians tend to avoid because they seem to be confusing or disturbing. It's pretty neat to see kids from like the age of 10 who are even, you know, writing in saying, just how engaged they are in the scriptures. And then we've got like 85 year old folks that are writing and going, I thought this was, was for my grandkids. And I never thought I would go back and read the Bible with new eyes. With videos now in 56 languages, Bible Project is also reaching the Muslim world. You find people in, uh, you know, Tunisia watching the Arabic videos and sending in comments of, you know, I'm a Muslim who, you know, has been interested in the Bible and I didn't know how to, you know, engage it or read it. And I found your videos on YouTube because they're free. And now they're opening up the scriptures in a unique way and, and understanding, you know, what, what it's saying about Jesus. So an experiment once meant to only help a few friends is today helping millions around the world to know and understand the Bible better. One thing we think God is doing is that he's helping people see the Bible as a really important part of their life. And our contribution to that is helping people see the Bible through this paradigm of biblical theology, where you appreciate the Bible in its literary design, and you understand the Bible as a story, and you see how the story leads to Jesus, and then it just makes things, <laughs> it's falling apart. <laughs> it makes things, uh, makes things more meaningful. Dale heard CBN News in Portland, Oregon. Well, Stephen, I don't know if you've seen the Bible Project or not, but I am telling you, and I know this is going to be a very bold statement, but it might be one of the greatest resources for our culture that has ever been created. I, I sincerely mean that. And what I love about the Bible Project is their ability to take really complex issues and make them accessible. Because the truth is, we live in a biblically illiterate culture. And we can get upset about that, or we can do something about it. And they've done something about it. It's amazing. Well, yeah, I mean, like, there, there has to be, you know, someone or something that addresses, you know, Bible illiteracy. And uh, I, I know for me personally, I love to, I, I, I love YouTube. I, yes. I consume, you know, YouTube con uh, content, but uh, I'm a visual learner. So to see kind of the Bible uh, illustrated, I mean, it's illustrated. Someone has taken pen and paper, you know, for uh, hundreds of hours, perhaps, oh, thousands. thousands. You know, I, that, that to me, again, my five girls, I like to bring things back to my five girls. If my five girls, uh, oldest to youngest, can understand, you know, the, the Bible through this type of uh, illustration, I think, what a tremendous resource. Well, and the animations aren't cheesy. Like, they're really, <laughs> I, I know I, I shouldn't say that, but they're really high quality, amazing. Actually, I find the imagery as stimulating and engaging as the content, but the content is really solid. And what I love about it is they're willing to tackle subjects that are really difficult that we don't often talk about in church, like suffering. Right, right. Where is God in, the, in suffering? They, they tackle the books of Job and Ecclesiastes, these these challenging books in a way that you can access it uh, to anybody. So yeah, I, I would encourage everyone watching to access it's free, absolutely free um, resource that is actually changing literally thousands of people around the world. Well, and, and like uh, so much of the, you know, the Bible was like, 
it was being read by people at, you know, way, way before us. They, they would have understood the context that it was Correct. written in. And for us now in, you know, 2023, like they, they do seem a little, you know, fairy ish but to people back then, the imagery, I think that's tremendous. It, it is absolutely brilliant. And so, yeah, show your girls, they're gonna love it. I, I promise <laughs> they are gonna love it. And if you've not tapped into this great resource, make yourself available to it. You can even learn, they've got classes now. You could take a whole Bible class or course online. It's free, it's amazing. Well, when we return, Dr. Harrison Mungle has an encouraging reminder about your own unique value. Hello, today I want to talk to you about God's heirloom. You know, we are all heirlooms. Heirlooms are something that's very precious, that is passed on from generation to generation. It's an original of something. And when I think about the heirloom of God, I think about each one of us, how important we are to God. The moment we, you know, recognize that God is our Savior and He has a plan for our lives, that we are an original, we're not a counterfeit, we're not a replicable, but we are an original person that God has a plan for our lives for the future. And, you know, when I read the scripture and in 2 Kings chapter 19 and verse 34, it says, For I will defend the city to save it for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. And this is a story where um, God saved an entire city where he destroyed 185,000 soldiers as a result of, for the sake of David. That's how important God saw the legacy of David to continue. And when you think about your lives, think about the who you are as a person. The Bible says that we are joint heirs with Jesus. That means that we are the heirloom of God and that your life, your person, that the, the person you are, God can because for your sake, for the sake of your life and how you have groomed yourself to understand your position in Christ, just like David understand himself in God, as a result of David, God saved an entire city. Can you imagine as a result of your life, how many lives can be saved because you are God's heirloom so he can pass on a legacy from your life, perhaps to your children, your grandchildren, maybe your great-grandchildren. Sometimes we lose sight in terms of the value you see in yourself as a person and how God sees you. When God created you, God placed something in your life. He placed a value in your life where you become His heirloom. You know, an interesting thing too is what I like about God. He says when He opened His hands, that your name is written in the palm of his hands. That tells me how important you are to God, that you are his heirloom. In fact, the Bible says that you are, we are the apple of his eyes. And because of us, other lives can be changed and, and God can protect. If he protect a whole city, destroying 185 soldiers by his angels, can you imagine what God can do in the generation ahead of us because of our lives and our status in him? I want to encourage you today, recognize who you are in Christ. Recognize that you are very important to God, that you are the heirloom of God. And because of you, your generation, lots of lives are going to be changed and God is going to protect people through you because of your faith in him. God bless you, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now. Well, I hope you are encouraged and inspired with the truth that God sees you, He knows you, and we are committed here at the 700 Club Canada to continue 
to tell stories and encourage you with this truth. God is on your side. And I want to invite you to become a partner with us so that we can do that. And if you become a monthly partner today, you'll automatically receive the 10 laws for success. It's keys to win in work, family, and finance to discover powerful biblical principles that will transform your life. As well, you'll receive our monthly a magazine entitled Frontline. So why not give us a call today at one 855 759-0700 and partner with us on this amazing mission. How is this world supposed to work? Is there a godly framework for success? How can I live with eternity in mind? Get answers to these questions and more in Practicing the 10 Laws for Success from CBN. Featuring Pat Robertson's signature book, 10 Laws for Success, in hardcover and audio formats. Plus a brand new study guide. Practicing the 10 Laws for Success will give you the tools you need to live with godly purpose and power. Learn how to practice life-changing principles such as the laws of use, unity, change, and responsibility. Discover biblical principles for achieving success both now and for eternity. Put the laws of God's kingdom to work in your life. Get practicing the 10 laws for success today when you become a CBN partner. Call or go online now. Well, I hope that you have been encouraged today as I have been that there is hope for Canada, and it's found in God's church through innovation and creative ways that we're doing that. And I know you're doing that, and cheering you on, really excited for you and believe in you. So yeah, what, what do you see as, as something of hope that we can walk away with today? Oh, just so much. I mean, it's encouraging to see the church growing. It's, in, it's encouraging to see resources like we have right now readily available free to, to kind of grow our, our, our uh, Bible knowledge and understanding. Yeah. Uh, I mean, those are just tremendous places to start. It's amazing. Well, and we also know there's power in prayer. And so we pray uh, for you. When you send a request in, we take that really seriously. And so we're going to pray right now. So why don't you lead us in, in this first prayer request, Stephen? Well, there's Angela, and she's needing prayer for uh, depression. So, Lord, we thank you uh, that, that you, you give us peace, and you give us peace that surpasses all understanding. So over Angela right now and any other partners that are dealing with depression, Lord, would you give it peace uh, and, and joy in Jesus' mighty name. Well, amen. And Joel said, please pray for the success, success of my friend's daughter's surgery. So, God, you go before us. You are a healer. May this surgery be a great success, and may you receive all the glory. Amen and amen. Our power verse today is found in 1 Peter 4, verse 10, where it says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. As faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. And I think that best summarizes what the church is. Use your gifts. Let's change the world with God's help. Thanks for watching. To contact us, visit 700club.ca. Tomorrow on the 700 Club Canada, the inspiring journey of a once bullied young girl whom God turned into a beacon of boldness.